composite materials have a wide range of applications, from domestic tools such as ceramics, to constructions such as concrete and plywood, to high performance structures such as aircraft, spacecraft and ships, to mention a few. As you can see, the composites utilized in such circumstances vary greatly in terms of composition and structure to cover such a wide range of applications in vastly different industries. So learning how to categorize various types of composites will help us to understand the benefits and drawbacks of each type and allow us to decide which to use for specific applications. In this lesson, we'll discuss the various categories of composite materials. We'll also look at the numerous applications and benefits that are associated with each type. Ready? Let's get started. Let's first look at some of the terminology that is commonly used in the study of composite materials and learn what they mean. The matrix and the reinforcements are the primary components of a composite. A matrix is a homogeneous base material that can make up the majority of the composite material layer. Reinforcements are constituents of a composite material that are embedded in the matrix, increasing the stiffness and tensile strength of the composite. Fiber is a common example of reinforcement, as shown here. The anisotropy of the composite is usually caused by bonded or embedded reinforcing fibers. In essence, the stiffness differs in different directions. Fiber or particle volume fraction is another essential term you may encounter. It is the volume of all the fibers or particle with respect to the total volume of the composite material. Now that we have clarified some of the terminology, let's look at the classification of composites. Composite materials can be categorized based on the materials used for the matrix and the reinforcements, as well as the orientation of the reinforcements inside the matrix. Based on this, we broadly classified into two types, particle reinforced composites and fiber reinforced composites. Let's start with particle reinforced composites. As seen in the figure, it consists of particle of one material dispersed in a matrix of a second material. Though they can be of any size or form, the majority of the particles are spherical, ellipsoidal or polyhedral in shape. Based on the type of reinforcement used, particle reinforced composites are further categorized into two types, large particle composites and dispersion strengthened composites. Using an example, let's understand what we mean by large particle composite. Concrete is the most common large particle composite. It is composed of a cement matrix, which is a fine mixture of lime, alumina, silica and water that bonds with particles of varying sizes like sands and gravel. Cermet is another prominent example of a large particle composite. The matrix is a primary ceramic substance into which metals or secondary ceramic particles are incorporated. For example, when silicon carbide or boron carbide is dispersed in a silicon nitrate matrix, both materials work together to improve thermal resistance and strength. In dispersion strengthened composites, the phase interaction occur at the molecular level. The matrix phase is either metal or metal alloy and the dispersed phase is either metal or non-metal. Thoria dispersed nickel, which exhibits relatively high physical strength as increased temperatures and finds applications in rocket nozzles and gas turbines, is one such a composite. It has 2-3% thoria dispersed in nickel. Let's shift our attention to the other major type of composite, that is fiber reinforced composites. In this composite, fiber is used as a reinforcing material for the matrix. When the matrix and fiber are joined, composite materials have significant better mechanical properties than when the matrix and reinforcing materials are utilized individually. 
Fiber reinforced composites are widely employed in sectors such as wind energy, sporting goods, aerospace and defense, civil engineering, automotive and beyond. The length of the fiber used as reinforcement is one popular way to classify them. As a result, we have short fiber reinforced composites with fiber lengths of 2 mm. Fiber lengths in long fiber reinforced composites range from 2 mm to 30 mm. When the fiber length exceeds 30 mm, the material is classified as endless fiber reinforced composite. The orientation of fiber in the matrix is another approach to classify fiber reinforced composite. As a result, we have fiber reinforced composites that are randomly or continuously oriented. Each of these types can have a short and long fiber variation. This form of composite is utilized in non-destructive testing ultrasonic transducers. And this form contains high performance continuous fibers such as carbon, glass or aramid fibers that have been impregnated in a matrix of thermoplastics such as polycarbonates or thermoset epoxy resins which find wide applications during manufacturing of Formula 1 cars aeroplane wings and energy blades, prosthetics, bicycle drones, and many other high-end products. Now that we have identified the various types of composites, let's look at the most common forms in which they can be found. Laminated composites and sandwich composites are the most common types of layered composites. The laminate in the laminated composite is made up of stacks of 2D laminas, a lamina is a composite material in sheet form that is also known as a layer or ply. The orientation of the laminas is determined by the application and desired mechanical properties of the composite. Plywood is a common example of this type of composite. Another example is layered carbon fiber which is used to make landing gear doors, aircraft, fridge lodges, leading and trailing edge panels of wings and high performance sporting goods, among other things. A lamina is typically made of unidirectional or woven fabrics. The unidirectional form provides the maximum strength and stiffness in a desired direction, and laying up multiple layers of unidirectional materials can tailor the stiffness in various directions. Woven fabrics are common in complex curved structures, such as the woven fabric can drape and shear to conform to the part. While a laminate can be made by stacking individual layers sequentially, there are other methods of achieving a layering of materials such as braiding of a preform and later infusing with resins such as in a resin transfer molding process. Additionally, filament welding is popular in applications such as composite overwrap pressure vessels and this can achieve a layering of continuous tape of reinforcing fibers, orienting the tape in necessary directions to achieve an optimally designed pressure vessel. A sandwich structure composite is a special type of layered composites made by bonding two typically thin skins or face sheets to a lightweight core. The core material is typically constructed of a low strength materials but it increased thickness gives the sandwich composite a high bending and even torsional stiffness while maintaining a low overall density. Depending on the applications, core materials may include foam, wood and honeycomb cell structures made up of aluminum, nomex or thermoplastic. This type of sandwich composite is used in high performance constructions such as aircraft, spacecraft, ships and civil engineering to mention a few. Even basic cardboard boxes use a sandwich structure. Let's now recap the topics we covered in this lecture. The type of material used for the matrix and the reinforcement as well as the reinforcement shape, volume fraction, of the reinforcement and the orientation of the reinforcement inside the matrix can all be used to classify composite materials. The composites can be divided into two categories, particle reinforced and fiber reinforced. 
with each giving distinct advantages in different applications. Particle reinforced composites can be classified based on particle scale size and particle volume fraction. Layered composite materials can have different fiber lengths, fiber to matrix volume fraction, and fiber to matrix arrangement. Layered composites usually take the shape of a laminated structure or a sandwich construction. The sandwich structure typically has a high bending and even torsional stiffness to weight ratio. I hope this lesson helped you to get a basic understanding of the various types of composite materials, the terminology as well as their material makeup and construction. This lesson does not cover every type of composite but some of the most common. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.